righty. Welcome, everyone. We got uh, an exciting workshop for you guys today. Uh, we're going to be going over EasyMASM, which is a framework system thingy to run MASM files on Windows, Linux, pretty much whatever you want. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I'm the president of the Computer Science Society, and I'm joined here by Usman, who's one of our event coordinators, and who's Hello, also a, uh, a contributor to EasyMASM. So we're going to have a nice, low-key, short kind of uh, workshop for you guys today, and I'm excited to get into it. So first of all, myself. My name is Jeremy. I'm the president of the University of Windsor Computer Science Society. I'm also the creator of EasyMASM. Uh, I'm also one of the founders of the WinHacks and BorderHacks hackathons, and I love everything tech. And I'm very excited to be presenting to you guys today. Uh, my name is Swan Faruqi. Um, I'm an event coordinator on the University of Windsor Computer Science Society. Um, I'm also a contributor to EasyMASM and ATA for the Comp 266 class, so I've used this a lot. Uh, I am a president of the New Windsor DGDC Club, Video Game Design Club as well, and a administrator to the Windsor Python Code Camp. All right, so a little bit about what we're going to be getting into today. So first, I, you know, I'm going to give a brief introduction on what EasyMASM is and why you should use it. And I'm already noticing that I got a mistake there, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, but uh, then we're going to have a nice little interactive demo where I'm going to go through and show you guys how to get EasyMASM set up on Windows, run some MASM files, easy peasy. And after that, we're going to have Usman on, and he's going to give a nice little demo on how to use EasyMASM on Mac or Linux, you know, depending on... Uh, what you're using, it's a little different how you use EasyMASM. And then after that, Usman's gonna give a little session about SSH, SSH keys, uh, SFTP, SCP, all that kind of stuff so that when you're working in an environment where you're, uh, you know, you've got to uh, work remotely, you know, via SSH, we're gonna make it so that you can work the best you can. So what exactly is EasyMASM and why are we teaching you guys about it today? Well, EasyMASM is essentially the quickest and easiest way to start coding in MASM for the Comp 2660 class. Now, if you're not in the Comp 2660 class, you know, you haven't taken it or uh, or you already took it or whatever, you know, if you're if you don't know what MASM is, it's basically the uh, Microsoft's macro assembler, so it's assembly. And uh, traditionally, people in this class would use something like Visual Studio, which is, you know, huge IDE. And uh, as very much, so I created EasyMASM as a, a nice little replacement for that. So this will allow you to start coding in assembly files very easy for the Comp 2660 class. Now it works on Windows out of the box, very easy. And I'll be showing you that in just a minute. Um, and it works on Linux with Wine installed pretty simply. There's a few caveats, but it does work pretty well on Linux. Uh, and then on some earlier versions of Mac OS where Wine can be installed, uh, you can use it on Mac. However, unfortunately, newer versions of Mac OS don't allow you to install Wine. Um, but there are some ways where you can get around that via things like SSH, and uh, Usman will be going over that a little bit later on. So now, why should you use EasyMASM, right? It's not, EasyMASM isn't something that's officially supported by the class. You know, it, you're not going to see uh, lab sessions dedicated to it, or at least not yet. Um, so why should you use it instead of Visual Studio? Well, it's quick to set up. There's only three main steps to get started, and each of them takes less than a minute. So essentially, if you know what you're doing, you can get set up in three minutes, two minutes, whatever, and I'll be showing you that after. 
Um, now it's also lightweight and it's small to download. So I think it's like less than eight megabytes or something to download it, which is just absolutely bonkers compared to Visual Studio, which when I installed it, I believe it was like 20 gigabytes or something with a G. And uh, EasyMasm is just eight megabytes with an M. So it's a lot easier to use something like this instead of Visual Studio just because of how small it is. Uh, and then third, it's cross-platform. So a lot of people are Linux users in computer science. And, uh, you know, Visual Studio, the, the only real solution there was in the past was, oh, just dual boot or, oh, just use a VM. Well, that doesn't work very well. So, you know, not everyone has the capacity to have a VM. So that's why, uh, you know, whether it's via Wine uh, on Linux or via SSH into the CSS or the CS servers or using no machine. It's very cross platform and you can use it like that. And the last one, which is one of my favorites is you can use any text editor you want. So whether you're someone who loves VS code, notepad plus plus Vim, even if you want to use the traditional notepad, EasyMasm does not discriminate because it's not an IDE and it's not tied to one particular editor. So you can use whatever you want, however you want, and uh, you'll be able to get started. So what are these three easy steps to get started? So the first thing, very simply, you just clone or download the EasyMasm GitHub repo. So you take this repo, you... Uh, clone it and actually I'm going to type it in chat so that you guys can follow along with me. All right. Uh, come on. There's the repository. So you just go there and uh, if you have Git installed, it's just Git clone and you're done. If you don't have Git installed, you probably should. But if you don't want to, for some reason, you can just download the zip. Uh, second step, very simply, edit the source.asm file. So there's an ASM file with like a template for you already set up when you download EasyMasm. So just edit the file to do whatever it is you want. And uh, then the third step, very simply, you just run the program from command prompt or PowerShell. Uh, if you're on command prompt, you do run source, just type that in. And then if you're on PowerShell, you use dot slash run source. And if you're on Linux, it is a little bit different, but it's not much harder. So without further ado, I'll give a short little demo on how we can actually set this up. So... Let me, I've got the repository open right here. So this is the repository. So you might be wondering, you know, what is all this stuff? This looks confusing, um, but it's actually very simple. And if you look, there's, you know, a step-by-step -step easy guide. There's an FAQ, some common errors and stuff, common issues people get into. You have my contact information here and then some credits for some people who've helped me with the project. So, and there, I even created a little video for you guys to watch. So if you want to watch this video, I'm not going to play it for you today because, you know, it is a live session. But uh, yeah, everything you need with just this repository, you should be able to get started. So now... If you want to actually get started and clone this, all you need is this link up here, or you can get it from here and hit copy. And uh, I think what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run through the steps very quickly so that you can see just how fast this is. And uh, let me make that a little bigger. And then... After that, I'll go into it into more detail. So I'm just going to clone it to my desktop. 
I'm going to do git clone the repository. And it takes a second because I'm streaming, so my Wi-Fi is a bit slow. And oh wait, I guess I got to open it up first. Open it up. You can see this is the source.asm file. This is kind of you know what's inside of it, and it just does one thing. It just calls dump regs. Um, but, and then, so I'm on PowerShell. So now all I have to do to run that is just dot slash run source. As you can see here, this is the output we expect. So it was that easy. All I had to do was clone the repository, do dot slash run source, and then you're done. Very, very simple. But I think you know, for the purposes of this demo, I'll go into more detail. So if you have Git installed, like I said, all you got to do is copy this. And then the command is just git clone and then that. And then that will download the file for you. But, you know, I already did that, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, come on. Okay, PowerShell is being weird with me right now, so I'm going to close it. But if you don't have Git or you don't know what Git is and you're a little confused, you can just download the zip. And you'll see it downloaded here. So I just open it up. And don't make fun of me for using WinRAR. But uh, you can see it's there. You can extract it, whatever. I'm not going to go too much into detail with that. Um, but... It's there for you if you want it. So, so now that we've actually cloned the repository, and I'm happy to see in the chat that we have some WinRAR fans. Um, I wouldn't particularly call myself a WinRAR fan, but no, I, I actually don't plan on buying a license anytime soon. But uh, I appreciate that, and I'm sure the WinRAR team appreciates that too. But anyways, so I'm going to go back into the directory. So now all I did here is I just opened up the directory that we just cloned. And now I'm going to open it up in VS Code just so that you guys can kind of have a better idea of what you're looking at in the whole repository. Okay. And... Let's make this a little bigger. Nice. All right. So you'll see a few files right off the bat. You might be a little confused about what everything does. And you'll be confused why I don't have the .NET Core SDK. Uh, sorry, Microsoft, but I don't plan on using that anytime soon. Uh, so to just go over what everything means here, uh, the readme.md, this is just the stuff you read in the GitHub repository. Um, this run.bat, this is a batch script that just runs all the commands necessary to uh, actually run emasm. Run.sh, this is something that was developed for Linux specifically. So if you're a Linux user, you're actually gonna be using this run.sh file, but if you're not, then doesn't matter. You don't even have to, think about it existing. This lib folder here contains a bunch of yucky stuff that you're not going to touch. These are, you know, all the different libraries and DLLs and the, uh, the linker and the um, assembler that work together to actually produce the executable. But you don't really have to even know that this stuff is here. This is just stuff that we've included to make it all work. And then this is where the juicy stuff is, is the SRC folder. So this is where you put all of your uh, assembly files, all your programs, all your whatever. And you'll see, I open up the source.asm and we've got a nice fancy template. Um, you'll notice the syntax highlighting is a bit off. I think the extension I'm using isn't exactly perfect, but for the purposes of this, it works fine. 
Um, so from here, all we gotta do is open up our terminal again. And now we're in the easy MASM folder. We're like, okay, I wanna run this source.asm file. So I'm in PowerShell. So the command to do that, like I said before, is dot slash run and that runs this bat file and then the name of the file that you want to run so i put source now you don't put source.asm you just put source and that's because of kind of some fancy stuff that easy masm does uh, because it ends up actually creating an executable called source.exe so you just call it source so i run that and then this is the output we expect. So now if you're running it on command prompt, which I'll show you here, it's a little different. It's not much different. It's not bad, but I can go back into the folder. And instead of dot slash run source, instead of that, you drop the dot slash. So it's just run source. And then there you go. It's the same thing. And in a little bit, Usman is going to uh, show you guys how to do it on Linux. But just to kind of show you of how to do it with different files, I'm going to copy this source.asm file. And I'm going to call it wahid.asm. And my Mazen skills are a little bit rusty, so I hope I don't make a mistake. But... I'm going to define a string saying Wahid is cool. I'm going to MOV EDX offset of the message and call write string call CRLF. And hopefully this prints the message. It's been a while. <laughs> Um, so I've got, this is the command prompt open, so I'll do run. Now, instead of source, because I'm running wahid.asm, I'm going to do run wahid. And then you'll see the output that we're expecting. Wahid is cool. So, as you can see, it's very, very easy to get started with this stuff. Um... You know, I've shown you in just a few steps, uh, you can literally get started with coding in MASM this easy, this quickly. And uh, to the people who haven't used Visual Studio before, this may seem like, okay, what's the big deal? But this process right here that I showed you would take at least an hour, hour and a half and several gigabytes of space to set up. Um, and yeah, it, it, it's not it's not great. It's not very fun. And plus, as I showed you before, you can use Vim, you can use VS Code, you can use whatever you want. Um, so you may not have an appreciation for just how, uh, how easy this is and how much better this is than Visual Studio, but Honestly, I should have had Visual Studio open for you guys so you could have seen, but uh, I wanted that off my computer as soon as I downloaded it because of how uh, how huge it was. But yeah, so essentially that really is it for Windows users. Now, I do think you should stick around because uh, Usman's going to have some good stuff coming up. I'm actually going to add him in here. He's got some good stuff coming up with how to publish it, basically. How to do it in uh, in Linux. But yeah. yeah, that's it for me. Usman, I'll let you take it away. And uh, yeah, exciting stuff coming up. All right. So um, I will teach you guys on how to do this entire process in Linux. It's a little bit different. Um, it'll work on Linux and Mac OS, so uh, you guys are good for both. Now, on Linux, uh, first things first, you got to have Git. You got to make sure you have Git, and you got to make sure you have Wine installed. Now, depending on what you're running, 
I'm running Manjaro, so it's going to be different from Manjaro than it is from Ubuntu. But depending on what you're running, it's going to be a little bit different. It's not too too hard if you just do a quick Google search on how to install Wine exactly. Um, you can install Wine easily and get easily as well. Once you have that done, though, you want to open up your terminal. Um, let me just make a. I think I have. It. Mm -hmm. So you do the same thing. Copy this link because you have Git, and then you simply Git clone, paste the link in, let it clone over, and then you change into that directory. You go into that directory. And then the first thing you want to do is you want to take this run.sh file and there's a command. Now there's gonna be multiple commands I will say. There's gonna be many commands, so don't like freak out too much. I will definitely make like a PDF after this of all the commands that I'm going to say in this talk. And then I'll tell Jeremy to like upload that somewhere where that you guys can access it easily and like look at those exam uh, commands. They'll have descriptions as well of what you need to do. So for this, in this case, you want to run chmod plus x run that sh. What this does is it will basically let Linux know that you now own this file run that sh because originally this file was created by somebody else. It was created by Jeremy, so you might not have own permissions on it. If you do that, it'll uh, give you permissions. So once you do that, in this case, it's the same thing, run that as page and all by source. And that's the output that we expect. Now your files are going to be, it's gonna be the same thing as it is on Windows from here. Your files are all inside source. If you go into source, these are your files. And uh, if you want to add another file, you can make another file by copy by take source.asm. Copy the content. Actually, you know what? I'm inside here. Oops. Control N. Name this. Wahid.asm. Right, wahid.asm, it's going to be the same thing. It's just going to be dot slash run.sh and then wahid. So it's very simple, very easy. Now, on macOS, though, this is more based on macOS because macOS runs into the problem that if you have later versions, you cannot install Wine. It is no longer supported. So in order to do that, you have to do it through the servers. You have two options. If you don't have the M1 chip, the latest chip, then you can run a VM, a Windows VM, and do the same thing. Either run Easy, AS, uh, Easy MASM on Windows or VS Visual Studios, whichever one you want. Or you can do it through the CS servers. The, the drawback to using CS servers, however, is that they are much slower. Like my computer, like on my computer, I can straight up run it super fast. Like if I run source.sh, it runs it instant. CS server is just going to be much slower. That's just, just because the servers are slower. Now, have, however, there is some troubleshooting issues that you may run to if you are on the servers. For example, first issue you will run into is you will see some error that, that looks like this. It's mostly like this. If you see this error, it essentially just means that your Wine configuration, so Wine has a configuration file, and that configuration file needs to be reloaded. And in order to do that, you have to remove the file first. So rm, I'm going to my home directory, rm slash rf. All of these will be posted. So you do tilde slash fine. You remove this file, it's a folder. And then there's this command called wine cft. So essentially it'll run this. Now the issue is this takes a while to run on the CS servers. I've timed it and it takes roughly like on mine it ran instant, but that's just because you know my computer is pretty goaded. But on the CS servers, this will take about five minutes to run, sometimes even longer. And sometimes it gives you a bunch of errors saying that display cannot be found. And that's because in S when you're in the CS servers, you're essentially in the CS servers using SSH, which I'll explain later. And uh, in SSH, unless you have Linux, you can't output that display to something else. So it'll say that display is not found, ignore that error, 
keep on there until it ends up running everything. Once it does everything, then you'll know because if you run the dot slash sh command again, it'll actually output this instead of giving you some error like this. So essentially, that is how your own you're going to be able to troubleshoot if any error comes up. Sometimes it's an error like this. Sometimes it's an even bigger error, but it'll always have some like status. It'll always have like status C something 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 some random digit that it it spits out. Whenever that happens, just always run this command. Remove that config file and then run wine cfg or sometimes you can even run wine tricks i'll add both commands in there so that's it for ezmasm now i'm going to switch over to ssh so i'll start off with by explaining what ssh is ssh is basically a secure shell that will connect two computers together so you will be going from one computer your own computer into another computer and these are going to be the cs servers so the computers are in the cs servers on that server you can do whatever everything that you'll be able to do as if you were on a computer inside the unit. If you want to open, like if you want to, you know, make a document, edit a document, all that stuff you can do. So if I log into my server or my account, so it's going to be SSH followed by your uwin ID. So for mine, it's this at cs.uwinter.ca. That is the format. That is the format for SSH. You hit enter. If you're doing this the first time, it's going to ask you, do you want to configure this as like a key? It, it'll ask for a yes or no. Just type in yes, hit enter again. And it'll ask for a password. So I'll enter in my password. Remember the password. And I'm on into the service. Now there's three different ones. You can either get Charlie, you can get Bravo, you can get Alpha. Doesn't matter which one you're on. As long as you see this output, you are in. Now, what can you do from here? So in here, if I want to go into desktop, this is my desktop on the CS servers under my account. So the next thing you can do that I'm going to teach you guys is called SSH, setting up SSH keys. Because the annoying thing about this is, if I SSH again, you don't always want to enter a new password. Because your password might sometimes change, your password could be super long, like mine is, and it's just annoying to type that entire thing in. You want to make it so that if you hit this, you're in immediately. Now, how do you do that? On Linux, it's very easy. You just type in SSH keygen. You type this in, it'll ask you for where do you want to save it. Just save it by default. You keep hitting enter, you keep hitting enter, it'll generate a key. This is your public key. The way SSH works is it generates a cryptographic key. You don't need to know what that means. You just need to know that that's what it's called. They'll have two of them. One will be public, one will be private. The private one you want to make sure you never share anywhere. The public one you can you can upload to the servers, you can upload to wherever SSH is required, but the private one you got to keep on your computer. And essentially how it works is when you go to log into a, a host, it will the authentication will work by it'll take that SSH key, it'll check its own authentication keys. Your your host will have its own set of keys. And if those two keys match. It will generate a uh, it will generate a random string that gets encrypted, and your private key is the only one that can decrypt it properly. Once that happens, you're authenticated. In my case, I've done this. Now, again, if you're on Linux, the next step is easy. You can just type in ssh dash copy dash id followed by do an id. Yes, yes, yes. Ask for the password the first time. The first time it always asks for the password just to authenticate. The second time, if I type this in now, I'm in immediately. I didn't have to enter my password. I can I can exit as many times as I want. And it'll never ask for my password again. Because now my SSH key, my public one, has been uploaded to the computer. Now, how do you check that? If I go into SSH, there is a file called authorized keys. Uh, if I open up this file, I'll just add it since I don't have been set up. Right there is my public SSH key. That one is for my laptop, and that one is for my PC. They uploaded that SSH key, and now every time I go to connect or authenticate, it will know. So, how do you do this on Windows now? On Windows, it's a little bit different, a little bit more trickier. So, 
on a Windows environment, you're going to open up CMD. Windows has SSH already built into it. If my VM will want to work. Uh, screen. Okay. No worries. Can you? Let me start that up again. Yeah, gang, hello. Okay. No worries. Yes, I know it's fine. I think I'm at a good stuff, you boys. Um, can you resume, please? Okay, you know what? Doesn't matter. I'll just show you the way it works in here. Too. Okay, so on Windows, you don't have SSH key gen. So on Windows, when you do um. SSH, when you generate SSH, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to do SSH key gen. You're not the copy ID, my bad. You're not SSH dash copy ID. So when you do SSH key gen, it's going to generate a key and it's going to save it to, you're going to go into your users. Then you have your select, for example, whatever your username is, that folder. And then there'll be a dot SSH folder. Now, normally you won't be able to see this folder because it is a dot SSH. You're going to have to go into view and then you'll be able to like select the, uh, show hidden items, and then you'll be able to go into that folder. In that folder, you're going to have, and it'll look exactly like this, if I go into mine on Linux, you're going to have something like this. It's going to show this, a public, and a private. This is the public, this is the private. You have to grab the public. You have to make sure you grab the public. It'll be a dot pub. And if you open it up with notepad, don't open it up. If you have public, uh, publicator in, or the Microsoft publication one installed, they'll try to open it up with that. Don't open it up with that. Right click it, open it up with uh, with a notepad, and then you'll have your key. So, for example, right, mine is going to be and look something like this, right? It's going to look something like that. It's going to be a key. You can copy that. Right click, copy that, and then you're going to open up CMB. You're going to type in SSH, same thing. Yes, you're going to go in. Um, once you log in, obviously, first time it's going to ask for your password because you haven't set up the SSH key yet. You're going to go into in your servers. You're going to put your .ssh, and there's this thing called authorized keys. This folder, this file. You're going to open up this file and edit it. Now you can edit it with Nano. You can edit it with uh, whatever you like, but you need to open up this file. And essentially what you're going to do is, like for example, I'll open it up again, right? And you're going to paste your file, your, your copy key into this file and save it. Once you save that and exit, you'll be able to log back in using just regular SSH. You'll be able to type, like in my case, right? You'll be able to type this in. And actually now if my VM was working, it would be amazing, but that kind of sucks, but it is what it is. That's the only thing I wanted to show on Windows. Um, the other thing I'll be able I'll be talking about is SCP and SFTP. Now, the whole idea of this is to not use no machine because no machine is a very slow, horrible, and looks very disgusting. I hate it a lot, and I'm sure you guys do too. It is very bad. So transferring files. Now let's say you want to run something on the CS servers, but then want that file back onto your computer. How do you do that? Well, there's two options. You can either use SCP or SFTP. SCP is stands for Secure Copy Protocol. Now, this is used for transferring files over the connections, much like SSH, but 
you're not logged in. It'll actually just log, just log, it'll do it all in the background where it logs in, grabs that file or uploads that file, and then it's back onto your own local machine. SFTP, on the other hand, is an extension of SSH. So SFTP will actually be as if you're inside that terminal, like, like SSH is, like this is, where I'm actually logged in. That's how SFTP will work. And then you can move around, you can change the directories, you can remove directories, you can make directories, you can upload files, you can grab files. That's how SFTP works. Difference between the two is SCP is better for smaller files. SFTP is better for much larger files. Even though SCP can do larger files, it just takes longer. And SCP is fast. It's faster than SFTP in terms of smaller files. So how does SCP work? SCP works by typing in the first SCP. Then you're going to type in your source and then destination. That's how it works. It goes source and destination. Now, what is the source? Let's say I want to, if I go into desktop, presentation, I have this file called, or let's say I make a file, right? Touch, I'll call it, or I'll just bring this ring, hello.txt. Right, let's say I type in hello world. Right, and let's say I want this file, let me, Review. Let's say I want to send this file, hello.txt, over to the server. First thing I want to do is where do I want to send it? So I'm going to send it into presentation. Right? How do I check where I am? You type in pwd, these are basic commands. It'll tell you that you are in slash home slash review slash stop presentation. That's where I'm in. So on this end, I'm going to take hello.txt, that's my source. And where am I sending it? I'm sending it to fruitpview at cs.uwindow.ca, colon. Now I type in my directory. So I'm going to type in the slash desktop slash presentation. I have tap complete, but yeah, so presentation. I hit enter. It's a couple of seconds. I type in ls on this end. There's my file. I want to make sure it is the right file, and I just didn't randomly generate a file. There you go. But let's say I want to grab a file from the servers back onto my computer. How do I do that? So if I make a file on here called server.txt, this is from server. Right, just to make sure the file is there, server.txt is there. If I want to grab this file, put it on my local machine, you're going to swap the two. It's going to be SCP. What's your source now? Your source is from the server. If it's from the server, you're typing in your server, rookie.uinzer.ca, colon. Where is it located? Well, it's from desktop and presentation. If you're on Linux, the nice thing is if you're on Linux and even Mac, um, and you're using like your shell is bash, which is what I use. Um, once you SSH, once it, once you SSH in once and set up your SSH keys, you'll actually end up having tab complete where I can just hit tab and it'll end up auto completing for me. So like I hit tab and it put the rest of the entire thing in like slash home slash Ruki slash desktop presentation. It'll tab complete all that in. So yeah, that's my source. What am I grabbing? I'm grabbing server.txt and I'm putting it, I'm going to put it in slash desktop presentation. So my source is from the server from here and my destination, there's always this little space. That space indicates that you're now talking about the destination. Your destination is my local machine in this folder on this, in this presentation folder. So if I hit enter on this, 100% done. If I type in ls, there you go, server.txt has now been grabbed from the server onto my local machine. If you tried doing this in no machine, this would probably take you much longer than it took me because I can run these commands in like a couple of seconds.
but in no machine you have to open up no machine you have to log in you have to let no machine do its thing and then even when you grab over no machine does that stupid gui thing where it just loads for a couple of seconds and then sends the file over to your desktop very annoying i hate it pretty sure you do too so just to make sure that this is the right file i'll show you this is from the server how does sftp work sftp is a little bit different I use SFTP. You want to that? Yes. Okay, it looks like something happened there with uh, with Usman. I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, we'll see if we can get him back. But, uh, you know, see, everyone says Linux is that great, but I don't know. Sometimes things happen. No, I don't think that's what it is, but... Well, I think... If we can't get Usman back, he got transported to the CS server. Absolutely, that's right. Um, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free to uh, throw them in the chat right now, or uh, you know, you've got my email there. Um, yeah, don't really know what happened to Usman there, but. Uh, Yeah. Let's see. Oh, he just texted me now. His power went out. So I think that'll have to be it from uh, from Usman right now. So uh, I think we got into everything we wanted to get into. Let me see. Back. So we learned... SSH, we learned SCP, we learned SFTP, we learned how to do all these sorts of things with uh, Windows, Linux, and even Mac. So I hope this is helpful for everyone. I know uh, if you're a first year or a second year and you're watching this and, you know, you're thinking it's, you know, confusing or you're like, you know, what am I doing here? I don't, I don't know why I need to watch this or whatever. Um, I understand that, but once you get into the comp 2660 class and you see how, uh, how bad visual studio is, you'll understand. And, uh, yeah, I see I'm a fourth year crying because I didn't know any of this. Well, that's the thing is, uh, something like this didn't exist until, uh, last January, I believe is when I created it. Um, and uh, it really, the point of it was to take Visual Studio and try to get something that makes me not have to use it, right? Because Visual Studio is uh, it's pretty big and not very fun. Time to make easier, Masm. You know what? If you can find a way to make it easier than it is now, like I would be a hundred percent very happy to see that happen because uh you know at the end of the day when you're when you're learning something you're taking a class uh 
the easiest thing for you should be, how do I run this? You know, how do I get this? How do I get my development environment working, right? That should be the easy part. The hard part should be learning how to code and learning how to do stuff. But uh, unfortunately, in the past, you know, there, there really wasn't anything. There was one other solution called, um, what was it called? It was called like Masm Wine or Wine Masm or something like that. I have it linked in my repository, but uh, let me see. I have it here. Masm 32 Wine, that's what it's called. Um, I'm seeing someone ask, is this open source and can I edit it to my liking? And yes, you absolutely can. And I can actually show you one way right now to uh, like configure it to do something that may be a little bit different than uh, how we do it. So firstly, obviously it is on GitHub. So as you can see, if you want to edit it or whatever, you absolutely can. Um, you can, and actually if you look, we have some stars, we have a couple forks. We have a couple people who've already forked it and uh, have made their own changes to it. So if you want to change anything you want, then you can. Actually, like I said, I can show you one way to change it right now. Something I've been thinking of including is uh, right now you, there's a way to run it, but there's not a way to like build an executable. So say you wanted to make something that didn't delete the executable and you could still keep it so i just copied the run file i'm going to call it build dot that and the only thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this line here which deletes the executable and so now i don't know what that's about i'm going to do run sort or no sorry not run build build source let's hope it works and so you can see it ran it but in the lib folder we have our executable now so there's a way that um you know you can make some sort of change to it to make it uh, a little bit more to your liking and then if you have ways where you think you know something can be improved like say you want to edit the assembly file and you're like, hey, you know, we shouldn't do this this way, then uh, edit that. You can fork it. You can make a pull request. And uh, yeah, it looks like we got Usman back. Welcome back, Usman. Let Hello. Me... Can, I, can you hear me? I sure can. And I got right. that for you there. All right. Oh, uh, actually... Nice. Before we get started, I'm seeing someone asking a question. So when you were showing your source.asm program, the code was highlighted like call byte, et cetera, in Visual Studio Code are using a specific extension. Yeah, let me show my screen for a sec. And I can show you if we go to extensions, if we look up MASM, and the one I have installed is this one right here, Masm Code. I don't know if it's the best one, to be honest. Maybe this one's better. Maybe this one's better. I don't know, but this is the one that I installed. And, uh, yeah, it it's not perfect. Like, as you can see, include lib should be blue, but, like, only include is blue. And, that, you know, it's, so it's not perfect. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a good way of getting it running. Okay, let me take mine off and we can get back to some nice, fun stuff yes. with Usman. All right, so sorry about that. Power went out. I think Jeremy told everybody. Uh, where was I? I think I was SCP and SSH, if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay, I was, I was talking about SFTP, yeah. So, 
for SFTP to connect. Uh, it's similar to SSH, but with your cup connect. So if I type in LS, this is actually my showing all my files on my server. And if I want to move to desktop, it will show everything on desktop. Looks like that presentation folder that I made is all through there as well, and I can move into the presentation folder. The thing is, with this, there's also multiple commands. There's multiple commands which I'll post again. Um, if I want to grab a file, though, so like if I want to grab hello.txt, I'll just simply type in hello, get hello.txt, and it'll fetch it. And if you want to see, um, hello.txt should be uh, fetching from home. Please use that Okay. Hello.txt is inside my right there as well. Um, if I want to change my root, my uh, local directory, so for example, this my my computer's directory is simply just L LCD. It'll always be an L followed by just regular Linux command. So like L M L C B L L S L L S will show me my my uh, my local, and then L S will show me my the one that I've connected to, aka servers. So if I go back into desktop and then go into presentation, I think that's what I called it. So that if I want to grab that file, I can actually grab, I can make files in here. So if I like to type in touch, I don't know, um, pack up TXT, right? Oh, I guess touch doesn't work bad. There's commands for that. You can make files, you can edit files. With SFTP, uh, you can grab larger files. You can grab folders the same way, and that's what SFTP. So, like as you can see, it's just an extension of SSH, and you can use it to. I personally like SCP better because it doesn't have this whole this whole setup where you're just inside the server and it shows just like command line area. It's just a simple execution of a command that just sends a, grabs a file, sends it to your wherever you want it, and then you're done. With this, you just you have to be inside. It's like an SSH type thing, but you can use whichever one you want. The commands I'll post the commands for SFTP and for SCP. Those are the two that you can use. Now with EasyMasm, if you're running on macOS or if you're running on most, this is mostly based on macOS because macOS doesn't have that Wine feature, or you can't install Wine. If you're running on macOS. You're basically just going to be doing what you're going to be doing is I have a script for it. But I recommend that you don't use this script. You actually end up uh, doing this yourself. So if you're doing this yourself, it's simply going to be two terminals. One terminal you're going to open up. You're going to be SSH'd in. So for example, yeah, you have commands. You can have commands in there, which all can be find out, found online too, honestly. Oh my god, where do you? I can spell my name properly. All right. Uh, so in here, you're gonna have a you're gonna have your right terminal open up. In this, the most important thing is you want to save the easy Mazin repository to a place that's easy access, but you don't want to put it in like comp 266 assembly because that's like too many directories to go through. For me, like I have it straight up on my desktop. Easy Masm is just right there. Easy to be accessible on your desktop. I can go into this and run the, I think I have something here. Uh, into source. Yeah, I have source I think. I'll flash run the SSH. As you can see, it takes a while. Like, on my computer is very instant, right? But on the CS servers, and even like these errors, like all these errors you're gonna get. Yes, yes, I know. Sometimes they even end up freezing up. You'll have to run it multiple times or reconfig the the wine config file. The other thing you can do is there is a tag for SSH, but this will only work if you're you're on uh, Linux or macOS, where you can just type in SSH-Y. This directs the output of uh, 
your display to your current display, so like my display. And then if I type in um i think i tried it with somebody it might not because you don't have an x org server running and linux uses x org server ubuntu uses wayland but you, yeah so even with ubuntu if you download the latest ubuntu you're probably going to run into the program problem because it uses wayland not x org but this tag might not even work on ubuntu anymore uh, that's, um, I think this is going to reconfigure my entire wine config file because the last time I did this, it took a very long time. But the thing with servers are the the wine on the CS servers. The first time around, it takes a while. So like, if you spam it, second time around, it'll be a bit faster. Like, if I keep spamming this, it just gets it, it speeds up. It's still slow though compared to my computer. It's still slow. Now, if you're running. If you're doing easy madam, you'll have one terminal like this where you can just, you know, spam run. What would you do if dash y doesn't work? Well, that's why it's just for display output, right? Worst case, absolute worst case scenario, if you run, I have had it where I've ran into this issue where you got this error, this error. And then if you run wine config, there's another error that comes up where it can't direct your display output and it'll tell you like, that can that is this exact same uh, error that I got right here. I'll tell you this error that your make sure your X server is running and that display output is correct uh, set correctly. If you get that, that's your worst case. In that case, yes, you do have to open up No Machine only once, and you have to log in with No Machine and you have to run Wine Config on No Machine because Wine Config requires you. It opens up this like as you saw on my computer too. It opened up that tab that pop up. And that pop up, you have to click OK on to actually co like complete the whole wine configuration. So the first time around, you might have to do that. Hopefully, you don't though. I've set it up with. Uh, I've helped a couple students out, like four or five students with two six six this year. Out of the ones I helped out, I think it was only two of them that I had to op uh, make that I had to make them use no machine for the first time around. Two of them I made them use no machine. They have to open it up. Set it up the first time around. After that, they never asked. They never came back to me saying that they had a problem. It was working, working perfectly fine. But point is, one terminal for spamming. The left terminal. Now, this is a terminal where you're going to be basically just running SCP. So every time you make an edit, you like you code your file in whatever you want. You want to use if you want to use Vim. If you use Vim, you can actually just you know stay on here. You don't even have to have your own local machine. You can just straight up send the file over, edit it on there complete it on there and just download it later. But if you don't want to use Vim, you want to use your own editor, you want to use Visual Studio, you want to use Visual Code, whatever you want to use. The important thing is that you're going to have to send the file to the server, run it on the server, then grab it back. That is, or you don't have to grab it back. If it runs perfectly fine, you're, you, you know, you're chilling. But you will have to send it to the server and run it on the server. And that is a pain. So I did make a script for this. Now, the problem with this script is that it's a bash script. It, all, it won't work for user input. And user input, if I, in 266, I think it's assignment seven. So until assignment seven, you're good. You can use this, this script. After assignment seven, you cannot because assignment seven requires you to do user input. And this script will not work with user input. So when you get to assignment seven, you will have to switch over. That's exactly why I was saying that, you know, it's better if you uh, use SSH to begin with. So the way this file works is, or the script works is, it just basically copies a file over. That's why I said that keep it at, keep it somewhere that's easily accessible. Because when you type in the script, if I, when you end up taking the script, you're, you might have to change this around. So for me, it's desktop, easy, MASM, source. You have to make sure it goes into your source folder because that's where easy MASM re reads it from. But if you put it anywhere else, like if you put it in documents, then you'll have to change this to documents, obviously. This part, U Windsor is an alias, which I'll explain later. For you, it's going to be your UNID at cs.uwindsor.ca. Then with here, you'll have to change these two files. I'll leave like very specific instructions for that. But essentially what this does is it sends the file over, then it, it SSHs in, 
the script will actually log in. Then it will go to that directory. It'll run that file, but it'll make a script of that file. Now, timing script you'll learn you learn in um, system programming, but it's basically just a screen capture of your terminal. And since Wine has its own terminal, which this like this entire part, the actual execution of the 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 program, it's not in your your Linux terminal. It's in the Wine terminal, and because it's in the Wine terminal, in order to grab the output, it's a screen, basically a screen capture of how that works. In this script, if I want this script to work, uh, I need an ASM file. Let me just grab ASM file. Um, I'll grab wiki.asm. So if I want to send over wiki.asm, if this works properly, wiki.asm. To log in, then it will assemble, run it, give the output. Takes a while though, again. If you want to use this, it does take a while because it has to log in, it has to copy, it has to copy over that script, log in, run the file, then it has to copy back that script and run that script on your own terminal. So this does take a while. I don't recommend it. Only use it if you don't want to type those commands in. But then again, like they're not hard commands. Like SCP isn't a hard command. You just gotta remember source destination. Um SSH isn't a hard command, very easy. And then once you're inside, Jeremy has already explained what you gotta do with easy easy masm. So all that is very simple. Um what do I have? So we have covered SFTP, difference between the two. Aliases. Um aliases are only for Linux if you want to set them up. Um, I could go over it really quickly. So basically, the way aliases work is inside your SSH, you have a config file. If it's not there, you can create it. So this config file has aliases. So for example, my alias for uWinsor, my, my uWinsor account is users for you and the whole name is csiuwinsor.ca. And the way I use this is I can just take, straight up ty type in uWinsor instead of typing my whole UN ID. If I want to log in, it's just that simple. Those are just aliases. Um, now, after the power went out, I'm pretty sure my window started working again or not. But I quickly want to show how it is on Windows 3. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, full screen. This is the anyway. This is oh my god, I know why. Doesn't work, I won't care, but I really want to show. it works on Windows. It paused again, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah, okay, it's whatever. To the VM. uh yeah that's everything for me then if anybody has any questions for me or jeremy feel free to ask now i have pressed the pause button yeah i see people putting that in the chat it did look like you press it though so i don't know i pressed it a lot of times before like i can try it again man. Okay. I don't love Windows. I don't think this looks right. Um, yeah, 
Everyone wants to know how much RAM he got. 16 gigs. SMH. I think your mic's getting a little weird too. I don't know. On my end, yeah. Noise yeah, torch. I don't know what noise torch well. is, but. Oh, uh, yeah, that's everything for me. <laughs> Well, it's a good time for your uh, for your thing to mess up because I know. I think it was working perfectly fine before I started this. I tested it too, and then uh, on top of that, power went out too. So we see. Did you say that SFTP was better for large files? I'm guessing this yeah. means as opposed to SCP. Yes, as opposed to SCP. But I still like using SCP better. It's easier to use, too. Personally, I usually go with SFTP because sometimes I'm moving a bunch of files and stuff. So it's like I find yeah. it quicker, but then, you know, it's one of those I things. I thought it was a bunch just... of files. Like, yeah. Am I, am I still sharing my screen? I don't know. Is it still on my screen? Yeah, I just threw it on your screen. Yeah. Like, I, um, SCP even has, like, a command, right? Like, uh, for example, if I want to move a whole folder over. I could actually just type in SCP-R. This does it using recursion, and it'll actually transfer the entire folder over. But it is very slow. To, so, unless, like, you, I normally just zip the folder real quick and then send it over with just regular SCP-R tends to take a while because they'll send each file one by one and you don't really want that. So you could use SCP-R. Let's see. I don't use either, but I feel like I'd use SFTP, but I have to test out both to see what I like better. Yeah, me personally, like I, I think SFTP is a little easier for someone who's just starting out because it's very yeah. similar to, uh, to just SSHing in. So the only issue with SFTP is like, there's so many commands. Like, like if you're trying to change your local directory, it's LCD. And if you're trying to change the remote directory, it's CD. And there's multiple other commands too. So like, I remember when I started using it, I did SFTP as well, but I used to like get confused on where to go. So yeah. I just started using SCP because I was like, okay, I know that I want the file on my desktop on the CS servers. So, and I know that the, like, I'll just CD into the file first and, and just send the file over into the directory send the file over that's why i started using scp but yeah i see sftp you can use too yeah probably better for beginners yeah if you're a beginner and you're like not crazy like uh comfortable with the linux shell and like where files are located how things like that work sftp might be a little better so you can like play around and see where you're at you know and also the other thing is like if you are trying to move a file that's like 10 directories deep so like slash home slash jeremy slash desktop slash easy masm slash src slash final exam slash question one or something it might be a little easier to uh to use sftp instead yeah. of like typing all that in and once yeah yeah but they does make it easier to use SFTP then. In that case. Yeah. But yeah, uh there's a script. There's I liked how you can go in between your local machine and server in one shell or in one command oh, line, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or SFTP, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is kind of nice. Um that is nice, yeah. But you know. There, there are ways to do both, and it's like they're both pretty good. So, um, but yeah, yeah at the I end think, of the day, it's just personal preference. I think that's about it for uh, for Easy Masm. I hope everyone learned something new. Um, again, last chance for questions. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to throw them in the chat right now. Um, but Actually, you know, oh, Jimmy, you could probably show SSH keys on Windows. Since you're on Windows, right? I can, actually. Let's see. It's been a long time. Yeah, if you just... You can do it straight from CND if you type in SSH. Yeah. 
let's get out of there. Let's get out of there. Um, okay, let's just close that. Yeah, it's I'm gonna open up that terminal. And it's pretty slow, but that's okay. And yeah, it's just SSH. Dash key yeah. yeah, it's the same thing. Um, it's just the copy ID. It does it for you. Where it'll grab your SSH key and send upload it to the server. That command isn't in Windows yet, so yeah, that's the only thing that I want to show them. But yeah. But you already have it, so you don't want to overwrite it. But if yeah, you I'm, I'm going to hit no. But if I do like Vim, uh, let's see if I can just. No, I know I got to hit dot pub at the end because I don't want to show you my private key. Yeah. Pub. And then there you go. So that's that's how it works there. So you can see that's my pretty public key. Public key. Um, and then you just copy that and put it inside the authorized keys. So, yeah. You could even, like, if you're not comfortable with Vim or whatever, you could just notepad and then copy like that. Um, and then for me, I think I have a thing set up. Yeah, I have a bash script set up. Already. Oh, uh, Jeremy, apparently you're not showing your screen. Are you sure? It's showing up on my... I think I don't know. That's can you Wahid's can you see me. it on the? I think Wahid's just trying to goof us or something because it's showing on mine. I don't know. Can I get Wahid uh, saying that he only sees have any questions? What? He sees the presentation. He doesn't see your entire screen. Oh, I think you only shared. Uh... No, I didn't. But okay, I'll I'll change it and I'll show it again. So let's stop screen sharing and we're going to hit share screen and I'm going to hit screen two and I'm going to add it. So can you see my desktop now? Is it good? Okay, there we go. It, you know what? It's probably something up with the uh, the platform we're using, but yeah, to make it nice and simple, I've got my PowerShell open. So it's just same thing, SSH keygen. And uh, yeah. You'll just end up hitting enter through all of these, but since you already yeah, have one. You, you hit enter all through. I already have it, so I'm not going to overwrite it because then I'd have to change a million things. But from there, I can just do this notepad paste that in you got to add dot pub at the end because otherwise it'll be your private key but, hey, you uh, there you go there's the public key you guys can do whatever you want with it because it literally doesn't do anything but let's say i copy it now if i do if i go into the cs servers i've got a script set up to do it automatically i think it's uh dot ssh, SSH and then slash. authorized keys yeah and you can see i've got it's a bunch of stuff here, but in yeah. there yeah you it's already in it here in but yeah if i wanted to you just go like that and then there you go but yeah like i said I already have it, so I'm not going to change anything. Um, I see someone having a camera up. Go ahead and take a picture of the public key because you can't really do anything with it. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty easy to uh, – and actually, I can show you. I think I have EasyMasm on mine as well. Slash run.sh source. And then you'll see – Sometimes you get issues like this. That's another thing about EasyMasm and using Wine specifically. Sometimes you'll get things that say it's an error, and you'll yeah. get this thing here, and it says it's an error, but it actually isn't. Like, I don't know why a bunch of things are zeroed. I must have done that. 
manually or something. I move that so I made EAX zero. Um, but yeah, I think unless anyone's got any other questions, I think that's about it for the uh, the talk today. I hope everyone learned something new and uh, I'd like to thank Usman for coming on and showing us how to do all this. Um, you know, I think uh, whether you are someone who has already completed the class or someone who is in first year and isn't even going to be taking the class anytime soon, I think it's still important for everyone to uh, kind of show how this works. And uh, I think it'll be super useful for everyone in the future. So, yeah. All right. I'm have not seeing day, any everyone. other questions. So, yeah, everyone have a great day. And, uh, oh, and before I sign off, we have another workshop same time next week. Uh, we're going to have our first year representative, uh, Kelly Owenya. Hope I pronounced that right. And she's going to be showing all the first years and second years and everyone else who doesn't know how to set up VS Code on your local machine to run C files. So if you're someone who uses uh, no machine right now or SSH or whatever, and uh, you want something a little nicer, definitely stick around and uh, check your inbox and check Discord and we'll have tons of announcements. And actually, I think we have an events page. So everyone can sign up for the event on the events page right here. So, yeah, there we go. All right. I hope everyone had a good time today, and uh, we'll see you next week for uh, how to set up VS Code with Kelly. Take care, everyone.